DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I'm again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to 10,000 bucks. And if any of them say the secret word, they can take home an extra $100. And this is the word right here. Groucho will talk to our first couple right after we hear this important message from our sponsor. In the old days, you had to shift gears with clumsy controls like this. Wasn't easy. Later, the gear shift moved up in the world to the steering column. And then automatic transmissions brought complicated dials and levers that were impressive, but sometimes confusing. But now, here's the quickest, smoothest, easiest method of drive selection ever invented. DeSoto's great new push-button driving. A positive mechanical control. To put the car in any driving range, just push a button and go. DeSoto push-button driving is safer, too. It's out of children's reach, and it's designed so you can't make a mistake. Push-button driving is easier and safer. And to see just how fast and smooth it is, watch this professional stunt driver. Now, push-button driving is such an obvious improvement, competing cars will imitate it next year or the year after. But DeSoto has push-button driving now, so why wait? Tomorrow, drive a beautiful new DeSoto with push-button driving. You can enjoy the best this summer. Drive and price a DeSoto tomorrow. Well, Groucho, Joan Phillips is waiting to talk to you, and her partner is a special guest from the wide open spaces, Mr. Monty Montana. Welcome to You Bet Your Stable. <laughs> Say the secret word and you get an, uh, a half a bag of oats. You, you split $100. Now, Joan Phillips, I presume that's you, huh? No, I'm Monty, oh, Mon I'm Monty Montana. Monty Montana, oh, a great old name. And this is my horse, Rex. Well, over the there? Smartest horses oh, in the business, right here. Really, is that so? That's right. Now, you're Joan Phillips, huh? Yes, I am. I hope you don't mind having a refugee from a glue factory as your partner. No, not really. Huh? Not really. You like him? I think it's very beautiful. Well, it might be a good break. It isn't every contestant up here who has a partner with good common horse sense. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rex, uh, I hope you don't mind if I kid you a little bit, do you? <laughs> he speaks English very well, doesn't he? <laughs> You think he'll say the secret word? <laughs> Certainly <Save me> confident. <laughs> now, Mr. Montana, your name is very familiar. Aren't you the well, uh, well-known Western State? That's right. I, you probably heard of me at some of the rodeos. I worked rodeos from coast to coast, Cheyenne, Pendleton, Calgary, and all the big shows, and I entertained kids all around the country. Well, where are you from, Rhode Island? No, Montana. Oh, Montana. <laughs> Joan, where is your home? Philadelphia. Philadelphia, huh? Pennsylvania. Please. Why don't you call yourself Philadelphia? He calls himself Montana. Huh? Are the girls all as pretty as you in Philadelphia? Joe? Well, thank you, Groucho. I think they're nice. You and Rex have something in common. You're, you're both from Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like that one, Rex? <laughs> you didn't cap it, huh? Well, you know, you, you're not... <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure there aren't two men inside of that skin? <laughs> See, Biscuit didn't care for that one, huh? Wait till I get this plug in the quiz. I'll make a real jackass out of it. <laughs> All right, now we're going to play uh, You Bet Your Life. And Joanne, do you mind if this equine Einstein helps you out in the quiz? No, I hope he can. Well, don't blame me if he gives you some bum answers. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, you select the dictionary quiz. I'll give you the words. You give me the meanings. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What is a neophyte? The beginner, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Novice or beginner. And uh, you have a good beginning here with one right. What is a cummerbund? 
come up. C U M M E R B U N D. It goes, it goes around your belly. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, it's a cinch rigging. <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's expressing it nicely. <laughs> and you have two rights. What is ledger domain? Ledger domain? Yeah. L-E-G-E-R-D-E-M-A-I-N. Domain is uh, ledger the domain. Uh, something about the country, but I just don't really know. Well, it's sleight of hand. Oh, you ought to know hand. that. Well. Well, you don't have one wrong. What is an oasis? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I could use one right now. A little water. <laughs> You know, they have water in the desert. Mm -hmm. You now a have one right. spot in the desert. What is a prognosis? A uh, forecaster? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very good for a fellow with a horse. <laughs> <laughs> you now have uh, two right. What is a chalet? C-H-A-L-E-T. That's a place to eat, like the Swiss chalet. The Swiss chalet, a house. A house. Well, Swiss mountain house. Right. You now have three right, get the next one right, and you'll have your $1,000. <laughs> what does verbose mean? V e r b o s e. Oh boy! Ask the horse. Do you know, Rex? <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> to exaggerate? No, no. Well, it means uh, talkative, wordy. Outspoken. Outspoken. Well, I knew it had something to do with bragging, but I couldn't. <laughs> you, uh, you now have one wrong. What is a natatorium? A natatorium? Yeah. Oh, that's where they have a lot of stuffed animals. Isn't it? No. no? That's a candy store. Oh. <laughs> a natatorium is a swimming pool. Well, you got two in a row wrong, so the game is over oh, for you. I'm sorry. I'm Thank sorry. you, anyway. Well, we, uh... uh... Well, we're going to give you one more question for $100. And we're going to make it 150 because there's three of them, and I don't think it's fair. You can use it, can you? I think uh, Rex can use the money, too. What animal plays the title role in a bullfight? <laughs> <laughs> Sound like a lot of bull to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a flounder. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, anyway. It's bully for you, and you've just won $100. Thank I'm you. sorry you didn't win more, Thank but you thanks for being with us. Thank you, Josh. It was a wonderful act. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it, but I'm going to head him off at the pass. <laughs> This is the California desert, a real desert of deep, loose sand, treacherous soft shoulders, blistering heat. And this is a lovely 1954 DeSoto Automatic on the desert road. Now watch. We're driving this DeSoto Automatic out into the sand. In an ordinary car, it would be almost impossible to move or steer in this type of sand. Watch this, though. The world's newest and finest fully automatic transmission Power flight transmission lets the DeSoto Automatic accelerate smoothly, steadily, evenly with great power, even here. And steering is simple, even through heavy, treacherous sand, with DeSoto full-time power steering. The power steering that works for you all the time makes turning the steering wheel as easy as dialing a phone. There are hundreds of reasons why this lovely 1954 DeSoto deserves the name automatic. Reasons you should discover for yourself. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer soon. See and drive the beautiful, stylish, distinctive 1954 DeSoto Automatic. It's available in two full series, the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the brilliant Power Master 6. Convince yourself that this year, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. Ina Anders and Lou Long are waiting. So folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a... <laughs> Ina Anders, uh... It's Ina Anders. Well, that's you, huh? What a baleful glare. Huh? 
What kind of a name is Ina? Well, Ina is Italian and Anders is Swedish. Oh. Mm -hmm. You hail from Sweden? Yes, I do. From Yen. From where? Yen. Yen? You have yes. a yen for Sweden? <laughs> yes, I have a yen I do, for you. <laughs> Are you married, Ina? No, I'm not. No, I'm a handsome girl like you. Any particular reason? <laughs> Why, well, you're going to be in a few weeks, I can see that. <laughs> Any reason why you're not mad, uh, married, a beautiful dish like you? Well, thank you. I, I don't believe in getting married before I'm 30. You're not going to get married until you're 30? No. Nope. Well, how long have you been waiting? <laughs> well, I have uh, about four more years. Yes, really? Mm-hmm. You're only 36? <laughs> Well, don't you believe in the old saying, don't put off uh, till you're 30 what you can do much better when you're 20? <laughs> well, I'm, I've seen so many couples getting married very young, and then they can't do what they want to do. <laughs> That's true. Half the people who are married can't do what they want to do. <laughs> and the other half doesn't want to do what the first half wants to do. <laughs> I'll get back to you, Ina. Is that the way? Yes. First, I have to warm up uh, Junior here. You're uh, Lou Long, huh? That's right. How old are you, Lou? Sixty-five. Sixty-five? Well, you don't look it. You look like 300. <laughs> Made in front of me. How long have you been 65, Lou? Quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> Let me attack it from another uh, vantage point. Uh, who was the first president you voted for? Do you remember? Yeah. He's McKinley. McKinley? See, I thought you'd go back uh, further than that. I thought you'd go around John Quincy Adams. <laughs> when you were a young man, whose name was in the papers all the time? You know, like uh, Ruby Rosa is now, and Jaja Gabor, and... Uh, well, Paul the Dalton boys, Emmett and Bob. Frank, Jesse, Fra and Frank his daughter, Jesse, Bill, who? his sister. Who's and Frank and Buffalo Jesse? Buffalo Bill. Huh? You're 55? Yes, sir. Lou, you must be 95 if you went around with Buffalo Bill in the... I'm old... 65. <laughs> Why do you insist that you're 65? Uh, who cares? Well, I can't get no older than that. Why not? Well, I can't borrow money if I get older than that. I have to keep... stay 64. Wait a Oh, he's got the wallet waiting. <laughs> well, you said, uh, you said money, so you get $50, Lou, and uh, Ina gets $50. Now, you don't Stand never up. have to get married, huh? Uh, <laughs> Why do you insist that you're 65? Who cares? Anybody, uh, Lou? It's, it's nobody's business how old you are. I don't think so, no. Well, I can't borrow any money after I'm 65. I have to stay 65. He said you can't loan the money after 65, but... You mean you're not a good risk after you're 65? Uh, Mr. Hahn, that's just where I bank, see? Uh -huh. And I uh, have to be out of that book, and you don't cash them. And if I'm over 65, you don't loan me no money. What is so this? I have the, to stay 65. I borrowed the other day. He said, you've been that old for a good while, Mr. Long. I said, well, I don't need to it. You understand? I can't afford it, can I? And he... got credit, and he loans me, and he said, well, we ain't paying back. <laughs> you don't have to pay him back? Till I win. Till you win what? Well, some money. Well, Ina, I... <laughs> Lou, Ina says that American men are cold. Uh, what do you think of Ina? Oh, <laughs> she's swell. I'll buy her with you. She... I'll take her. Are you Italian? She's pretty, ain't she? Yeah, he sure is. You sound like you have real warm Italian blood, Lou. Are you married? <laughs> no. You're not married? No. Why not? Are you waiting until uh, you're over 30? <laughs> Have you ever been married? Yes. Are you retired, Lou? Yes, no. Well, that's a very clear answer, but uh, <laughs> would you mind uh, amplifying that a bit? What do you mean, yes or no? Well, I said yes or no. I'm retired. I'm not retired. I have to go back to work again because I have to make some letters. That's why my Ben is dying to see you. Well, you're doing all right so far. Now, what line of work have you been in most of your life? Well, I've been a separator, played cards, played pool. You've been a separator? Dice, played pool. I'm champion, best in the world. Champion I'd pool? like to play you some pool for some money. 
You're sort of a con man, aren't you, Lou? <laughs> you no. like the carnivals and stuff, huh? Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. How did you, how do you separate the chumps from their money? Well, you sell paddles, maybe. There ain't no number on them, that money. And you shell, whatever it is, you know, whatever you do, you have to win. I can't afford to lose. In other words, you're crooked, huh? <laughs> well, yes and no. But <laughs> I know how. Uh -huh. Well, which part of you is crooked, the yes part or the no part? <laughs> well, uh, have you done any other dishonest work besides... Uh... The Connie games? And no, the... I never did kill anybody or help rob banks. And they might have known what they're doing. I'd get the money out of it, but I didn't help them. Would you consider robbing a bank if the proper opportunity presented itself? No, I wouldn't care for that. I've had the chances. Uh -huh. And you can't? <laughs> I know when they're doing it, know about it. Uh -huh. Did you ever that run into uh, any of the famous old uh, bad men of the West? Well, yeah, I met them all, know them all, yes. Uh -huh. Who did you meet? James Boyd, Buffalo Bill, Emmett and Bob Dalton. Well, what are your plans for the future? Are you planning on opening a floating uh, dice game someplace? Or no, I'm Do you going, want to join the Boy Scouts? I'm going to go back work my trade to separate. I'm going over to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think of Mr. Long, Ina? He's a typical American male. Do you think he's always chasing money? Do you think he's cold? No, but of course... Um, he has a lot of, of experience, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> she understands. <laughs> now, do you have a job, Ina? Yes. What do you do? I'm a nurse. A nurse? Mm -hmm. You know, I may get sick any minute. I <laughs> do you get any uh, eccentric patients? Oh, many of them. I had one a couple of weeks ago, which uh, he was about... 84 and oh, they're the worst kind. <laughs> they are, I tell you. That's the are. geriatric crowd, huh? <laughs> Except Mr. Long. Did you he know, get he... fresh? Sometimes, yes. You want to hold your hand and everything? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Would you hold his hand? Oh, I'd love to. You notice, uh -huh. she, you notice she's wearing... <laughs> How do you like it? Oh, I can stand a lot of that. Well, you're an interesting and, and charming couple, and uh, I'm sure it'll be only a, be a few weeks until you get married. <laughs> it's been fun talking to you, and now let's play your bets your life, huh? Now, wait, don't you want to win some more? Wait a minute. Oh, yes, I, I want to make some money. Yeah. <laughs> you selected movies, old and new. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Tony Curtis and Sidney Potier. That's uh, P-O-I-T-I-E-R. Are the stars. What's the picture? Tony Curtis and Sidney... The Defiant Ones. The Defiant Ones is right. And you now have one right. You rascal, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant you. <laughs> yeah, you wasn't talking to me. Now, in the movie version of Bell, Book, and Candle, who plays the male lead? James Stewart. That's right. You now have two rights. <laughs> Who is the star of The Old Man of the Sea and the Sea? Spencer Tracy. That's right. You now have three rights. Get the next one right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. What is it? Almost name? there. <laughs> now restrain yourself, Sonny Boy. <laughs> <laughs> What is the name of the last Cary Grant Ingrid Bergman picture? The last one. Cary Grant Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> well, it was uh, indiscreet. Written by Norman Krasner. You now have one wrong. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over. Hmm. The Night Heaven Fell and God Created Women are the pictures. Who was the star? God created woman, oh, oh, and the night heaven fell. Oh, be it Bardot. Uh, Bridget well, Bardot, yeah. Question. No, I don't know. I had no pronunciation. Man. You now have one right. I call it Brigetti Bardot. <laughs> <laughs> it's my own pronunciation. Who played the title role in Marjorie Morningstar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
He Natalie likes Wood. Kind of chummy stuff there. <laughs> Natalie Wood is right. And you have two right now. Now, here are the pictures. A Certain Smile, Legend of the Lost, and South Pacific. What male actor starred in these three pictures? Certain Smile, Legend of the Lost, and South Pacific. Rosanna Brazzi. Rosanna Brazzi. You now have three rights. That's an excellent right and have a Who plays the title role in the picture, The Matchmaker? The Neil of The picture, The Matchmaker. Oh. Uh, Anthony Prickers. No, no. Who plays the title role? It's a woman. Oh, it's Shirley Booth. Shirley Booth is right. Yes. You got four in a row right. You win one thousand dollars. Well, now you, you can keep your thousand dollars and quit, or you can come back later and uh, try for a bigger amount of money, maybe ten thousand dollars. I'll talk it over. Lou, I need the money. Now don't run away, you two. Just hang around. <laughs> <laughs> That means that our second couple can try for the double chance at five or ten thousand dollars tonight. Whether you want a dependable car for that son in college, a second car for your wife's shopping trips, or a late model low mileage family car, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can serve you. He has used cars for every purse and purpose. So if you're in the market for a good used car at a really fair price, you'll be wise to hurry to your nearby DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And when you're there, Look for the used cars bearing this TV sticker. TV stands for top value. Remember, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is the only place in town where you can get top value used cars. Uh, Lou Long and Ina Anders, would you come out and give us your decision, please? Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to go for the big money? Or are you going to take it and, and dash? I'm going to go on. You're going to continue? Yes. How about Foxy Grandpa? Well, I, I, I don't want to walk to Las Vegas. I better keep my ticket, but see if she gets broke, I'll loan her. And if she wins it, I'll borrow it, so it makes no difference. <laughs> she wants to go on her own, so I'll... In other words, you contemplate scramming, is that it? Well, uh, but you know, I've got this much made, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. I've well, you got better keep that better... bloodhound. You better keep it, Dad. <laughs> All right. Good. Good. Tina, yes. you're going to pick two numbers, one for $5,000 and one for $2,500. If either of these numbers come up, you'll win uh, whichever the number is. In. If it doesn't, you're going to go for $1,000. What numbers have you chosen, Nina? Eight and uh, three. Eight and three, Mr. Fenneman. Uh, would you mind twisting the wheel? Ina, give it a turn. Well, that's good. Oh, I see. Well, your numbers were three and eight, so that means the question, the big question, is worth $1,000, right? Now, in January of 59, Russia's first deputy premier made a trip to the United States. For $1,000, what is this Russian leader's name? McCoyan. What is it? McCoyan. Take the money. Uh, now, what hospital are you stationed at? Because <laughs> I need one myself. Huh? <laughs> what are you going to do with that money? I'm going to go home to Sweden so fast. You're going back to Sweden? Mm -hmm. Don't you like it here? Oh, I haven't, haven't been home for five years. Oh, since. you're coming back, though. Oh, huh? yes. Well, leave your number someplace okay. where we can get in touch with you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Good Thank luck. you. Remember, your DeSoto dealer sells two great cars. The outstanding 170-horsepower DeSoto Firedome V8 and the beautiful 54 Plymouth. America's best buy low price car. DeSoto, Plymouth, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you.
Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio. George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. September is Child Safety Month, so parents teach them to cross at corners, obey signals, and look before crossing.